When thinking about what breaks relationships, one thing that immediately comes to mind is assumptions. One example where this is seen comes in 2 Samuel 10. It's here where we are told that the king of Amnon dies and King David sends a number of Israelites over to comfort his son, Hanun. This is kind of similar to what happens now when the leader of a nation dies and maybe the U.S. sends over ambassadors to show support. Anyways, when this happens, there are some people within the nation who believe that the Israelites have come not to bring comfort and support, but to plot an attack against the nation since their king just died and they were kind of vulnerable. These people tell Hanun this, so he decides to attack and humiliate the men that David sent over. What we see in this passage is that the Ammonites make an assumption that the Israelites have bad intentions, even though there is no evidence that this is actually the case. This then leads them to doing something that breaks the relationship between themselves and the Israelites. And while it may be easy for us to see this story in scripture and just come to the conclusion that the Ammonites were tripping, we have to realize that this is something that we as people do more often than we realize. It's easy for us to see somebody do something that we didn't like or hear them say something that offends us and then make an assumption that they don't like us, that they are trying to harm or upset us, or that we shouldn't trust them. However, what we have to realize is that making assumptions without clear evidence is dangerous and it pushes people away. In Matthew 18, Jesus gives the instruction that we should handle conflict with other people by addressing their actions privately. The reason that we are told this is because until we sit down with somebody and get their side of the story, we don't have a clear picture of the situation. So often, it can be easy to assume the worst about people or situations, especially when we have prior experiences with people hurting us and letting us down. But we have to be intentional about not allowing that to bleed into relationships that we are currently in with people that are valuable to us. Another huge thing that will break a relationship down quickly is inconsiderate behavior. The key to being successful in any relationship is for both parties to be mindful of how what they say and do can make the other person feel. This is taught to us in scripture when we are told in Philippians to esteem others better than ourselves. And this teaching is key because when this doesn't happen, any relationship that we are in will go downhill very quickly. One of the most obvious examples of inconsiderate behavior comes in the book of Job. So in this book, the central figure, Job, is tested by God. He was a really, really great man who God put to the test. And in the process of being tested, he loses all 10 of his children he loses his possessions, and he gets really sick. After this, Job's friends pull up on him. And at first, they're just gathered together, keeping him company, and nobody's saying anything. But eventually, Job's friends begin to speak up. And when his friends start to share and start to talk, all three of Job's friends begin sharing the belief that God was punishing Job for some kind of sin and telling him that he should confess and get his life together so God will stop punishing him. Now, scripture makes it clear that Job was completely innocent and that his friends were just tweaking. However, the thing is, even if Job's friends were right and Job had done something wrong, they still would have been out of pocket for how they came at Job. The thing is, Job's life at this point was a complete mess. He was struggling for real. He was grieving, his health had declined, 
and his finances were in shambles. Job had it rough. And Job didn't need advice. He didn't need to be criticized. What Job needed was friends who, instead of throwing around a bunch of crazy accusations, decided to support him. But because Job's friends weren't considerate of how he felt and how their words would impact him, all they did was make a terrible situation worse. And while it's easy to see how trifling Job's friends are and feel like we'd never do that, at the end of the day, we'll fall into the same category and fail in our relationships whenever we don't pause to think about how our behavior can affect people that we care about. For us to avoid breaking relationships, we have to realize that what we want to say or do or have isn't the only thing that we need to consider. Finally, one other huge relationship breaker is allowing third party interference. What I mean by that is that when we are involved in a relationship with someone else and then we allow an unbiblical or unfounded issue that somebody not in the relationship has to disturb the peace of our relationship. One place where this is seen in the Bible is in 1 Samuel. Scripture lets us know that around this point in time, David was very popular in Israel. He had slayed Goliath, he had helped Israel win other battles, and the nation had embraced David because of all this. However, all of this made King Saul super envious, and he got so bitter that Saul actually wanted David dead, and he plotted several times to kill him. While all this was happening, David was actually married to Michal, who was one of Saul's daughters. So later down the line, Saul gets so fed up that he attempts to break into David and Michal's home and kill David on the spot. Michal, not wanting her husband dead, hides him and lies to Saul about where David is. Saul finds out that Michal is lying. Then he asks her why she helped David hide, which is a very silly question when you think about it. Michal then responds by telling Saul that she did it because David threatened her. Now, this was not true. Michal helped David because he was her husband and she loved him. Saul then takes it upon himself to have Michal married to somebody else. So let's, let's recap. Michal and David's relationship got compromised, not because of any issue that they had, but because of Saul meddling and causing drama. This is the same thing that happens in relationships all the time. You have a married couple that is happy until the in-laws stick their nose into things. You have an employee that is happy at a job until other co-workers start complaining about the boss. You have two friends that are getting along great until somebody else starts gossiping and stirring things up. At the end of the day, if we are happy in our relationships and those relationships function and play out in a way that is aligned with scripture, The opinions of other people do not matter. It's not important if a friend doesn't like who we're dating as long as we like them and they take good care of us. It doesn't matter if our classmate doesn't like our teacher or professor as long as they help us learn and treat us fairly. It doesn't matter if someone that we know had beef with someone that we're cool with as long as we enjoy being around them. When all is said and done, our relationships are our relationships. When discussing how to build a good relationship, the first thing for us to do is extend ourselves. 
We're told in the proverb that to have friends, we must show ourselves friendly. This means that while it's not always easy, we have to come out of our bubbles and reach out in order to establish or improve a relationship. One person in the Bible who did this was Jonathan, the son of King Saul. So when it came to Jonathan, the Bible tells us that he took a liking to David. Shortly after, Jonathan gifts David with a number of items and he makes a covenant with him. They become boys, their homies for the rest of their lives. And on the surface, it might seem like Jonathan came out doing too much. It might seem like Jonathan was being kind of weird because David didn't know him super well. So this could have made him look super pressed or awkward. However, in order to bond with people, it's important to show them that we care about them and that we are invested in our relationship with them. So often, our self-image is important to us. And there's nothing wrong with that per se. We want to feel cool, smart, and secure. And many times, we hope that others see us in that same way. The thing is, though, being seen as chill or cool or confident isn't what helps build a great relationship. What allows us to really get close to someone is taking that step to offer them our love and our care and our energy. That's how relationships are formed and grow. The thing that we need to build relationships is to express our appreciation for the people that we have in our lives. People can't read our minds. They can only interpret how we engage with them. If our behavior sends a message that they aren't important to us, that's how they're going to feel. If the way we act makes people seem like they're replaceable or secondary, that will dictate how our relationship with that person goes. The thing is, we as people sometimes have a tendency to send these messages even if we don't mean to. To avoid doing this, it's important to take the time to make sure people know that they are appreciated. A great example of this in scripture comes in 2 Samuel chapter 23. Here, David, who's been the king for years at this point, mentions how he enjoyed the water from Bethlehem, which is where David was from. The thing is, David was just kind of talking. He was just mentioning this. David wasn't making any kind of request or giving any kind of instruction. He was just sharing that he liked that water. Yet some of his men went and literally risked their lives to get David some of that very water from Bethlehem. And when they bring it back, David is so grateful for what they've done that he doesn't even drink it. David pours it out to honor God in gratitude for what his men did. David felt appreciated. My question for anyone trying to build or maintain a relationship with anyone is what are we saying and doing to make sure the people around us know they are valued? How are we letting others know that they make a difference to us. How we answer those questions will determine how successful our relationships will be. To build great relationships, we need to show unconditional love and support. The problem with a lot of relationships is that we're busy trying to keep that same energy. We want to show affection when we are shown affection. We want to be kind when we are shown kindness. And while there's nothing wrong with wanting to get back what we're giving to others, 
That's not the dynamic of a healthy relationship. In Luke 7, Jesus is criticized by a Pharisee for allowing the sinful woman to wash and kiss his feet. In the eyes of the Pharisee, Jesus shouldn't have embraced a woman who acted like she did, had the past that she did, and held reputation that she did. In other words, the Pharisee's belief was that Jesus should treat this woman with an energy that matched how she supposedly acted. However, Jesus responds with the parable. He lays out a scenario in which one person owes a small debt, and that debt is forgiven. But another person owes a huge debt. And that debt is forgiven. And then Jesus asked which person that had their debt forgiven would love their forgiver of their debt more. The person who had the small debt or the person who had the large debt. The point that Jesus was making is that when someone receives grace and love in spite of owing a big debt or making a big mistake or displaying a bunch of flaws, they will have a deeper love for someone who is willing to forgive that. The thing is, it's natural to want to withdraw ourselves when someone hurts us or lets us down or gets on our nerves. However, when we really want to give ourselves to a relationship and make it work and see that relationship go far, Jesus tells us, that we have a great opportunity to do so when we love people through their mess. When they don't text us back, we love on them anyways. When they cancel at the last minute, we love on them anyways. When the time comes when they do something that's unfair to us or gets on our nerves, we love them Anyways, because while we shouldn't put up with just anything, and while accountability is fair and necessary, it's our love and support that brings us closer to the people that matters most. And when we show that love, even in moments when it doesn't seem deserved, that's how relationships are built.